How should I know? I ain't got eyes in the back of my head. You ain't even got eight, ten eyes in the back of. Funny, ain't ya? Better hurry up with Mr. Andrews' supper. Uh, find one you are to talk about, Harry. Something you've never done in all of your life. <laughs> Harry, he says, <laughs> lays down on the sofa, just like a man, expecting a woman to slave herself away to a shadow. I don't know. They're all alike. Husbands and lodgers. Mr. Hendry, is the supper you ordered? Mr. Hendry, don't let it stay out here and get cold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? It's down there. What's happened? It's Mrs. Sharp. Nick, it's because I've actually hit the ring mark. Fetch a copper, quick. Scotland Yard, or Sudden Hawkins, S Division speaking. There's been a murder. Man stabbed. 26 Group Street, Endon. Hello? No, Inspector Horn is not in. Well, he's busy in a very important job. <laughs> well, he... He told me that he was looking for a, for a dull red Indian with a pointed bust. Ladies and gentlemen, will you turn to page two of the catalogue? Lot 17. Dull red Indian with tid bust. A very fine specimen. Have I any offers, gentlemen? Well, shall we start with five shillings, the most ridiculous figure? Six. Thank you, sir. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ten shillings, ten shillings I'm offered for this rare stamp in excellent condition. Eleven, thank you, sir. Eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen shillings I'm bid, thirteen shillings. Any advance on thirteen? Thirteen, thank you, sir. Fourteen shillings, fourteen shillings I'm bid, fifteen. Fifteen shillings I'm bid for this rare stamp. Any advance on fifteen shillings? Sixteen, thank you, sir. Sixteen, seventeen, seventeen, eighteen shillings, thank you, sir. Eighteen shillings, eighteen. Nineteen shillings, nineteen. I'm bid nineteen shillings for this stamp, gentlemen. Nineteen shillings, twenty, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-one, twenty-one in two places. Yours, sir, twenty-two. Twenty-two shillings, twenty-three, twenty-three shillings. Twenty-three shillings for this stamp, gentlemen, that any collector were proud to possess. Twenty-three shillings, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven shillings, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty, thirty shillings, thirty-one, thirty-two. 33, 34 shillings, 34 shillings I'm bid, sir. 34 shillings, 35 shillings, 35, thank you, sir. 35 sir. shillings. We haven't reached bargain figure yet, you know, gentlemen. 35 shillings, 35, 36, 36 shillings, 37, 37 shillings, 37 shillings is all I'm bid, gentlemen. Huh? 37 shillings, going for the last time at 37 shillings. Going, going. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. See what you've done, you made me lose it. How could I help it? You're always telling me that duty is duty. Well, couldn't you have waited until I got that dull red Indian? The chief superintendent says I have to go around there at once. Well, I'd rather have gone with that stamp in my pocket. Evening, Doctor. Evening, Inspector. I was expecting you'd be along. You made a come in, know everything, don't you? What have we got here? Dead about half an hour. There was a deep perforating wound in the left lumbar region, penetrating the lumbar muscles and entering the nephritic area, causing renal hemorrhage, acute anemia, hyperpiesia. What was all that? Let him put a knife in the kidneys. Oh, oh hyperpaesia. Ah. Well, if you don't want me, I'll go and make my report. Hello, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Well, at 8.35 p.m. on the evening of the 17th inst, I was proceeding in a southerly direction. Cut out the cause and get on with the pedal. Uh, found by the landlady, sir. Can't locate the instrument. What done it? Uh, the lady of the house reports deceased portmanteau's missing. Name? James Henry, sir. According to that receipt, produced. Uh, 19 pounds, 17 and sixpence on him, sir. Produced. Better keep an armed guard over that. And uh, a piece of jork, sir. Produced. Bring in the landlady. Right, sir. Well, I don't think much of his choice of apartments. Hmm. I wonder what he was. Hotel Porter. Uh, Hotel Porter, I thought that. How do you know? This piece of chalk. It's got blacking on it. He used it to chalk the room numbers on the boots he cleaned. See? Oh, marvellous. <laughs> All life's problems solved. No, I have been wrong. Last week's football pools, for instance. That? Well, the whole of Scotland Yard couldn't deduce what Chelsea will do next. Oh, this room hasn't been dusted for days. I wonder why. I can tell you why. I couldn't get in, see? How's that? Kept his room locked. Mysterious bloke he was. That type lifted he'd have to have a shoe on to eat a banana. No, 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 that's all right. Oh, no, it ain't all right. I've never had any trouble with the police before. You surprise me. 
How long has he been here? Three days. Came in the night before last. And now look at him. If I'd have known that was going to happen, I'd have cleared him out straight, I would. Well, I don't think he had this in mind when he came here. You're inspector. Oh, look what I've got. Letters. Mademoiselle Ilwise de Parmentier. Oh, cherche la femme. How much? In French, for there's usually a woman in the case. But it's postmark. Yes, it's a French um, stamp, all right. Here. Do you know anything about this, uh, what's her name, Mademoiselle Eloise de Parmentiers? Yes, the tenant before him. Oh. And a nice, quiet lady she was, too. Well, did he have any visitors? Visitors? What kind of place did he take this for? Well, if he lived alone, he had no visitors and there was no weapon, it's in the murder, it's a blinking miracle. Half a mo. I did hear the door go when I brought the supper up. Oh? It must have been him that pinched the bag. Well, how do you know the bag was gone if you couldn't get in? Because I saw it come in with him, and it ain't here now. Huh. What do you think I was giving my head for? I'd rather not specify. <laughs> how big was the bag? Oh, the kind easy to get away with on rent day. Hello? Suddenly you've been taking all this metal piece lately. Could it have been the bag? No, no, this is a clean round space in the dust. Oh, oh, Hercules. Hercules? Him with the muscles, my statue. <laughs> She means Hercules. Was it valuable? Valuable? Well, I'd weighed a couple of stone. What was it made of? Oh, iron or something. I see. A bloke's murdered. A 19 quid left in his pocket. But a heavy statue and a suitcase were pinched. What do you make of that? Hmm? <laughs> oh, um, simple enough, Inspector. I can reconstruct the whole thing. Oh, go on. Yeah, well, now, you see, these statues are always hollow, and somebody had put a roll of banknotes inside. What's that? Oh, psh, the woman. Now, the thief knew it was there and came in to burgle the police. He put a statue in the bag, and the deceased came in and caught him. They struggled, he grabs the bag... And, and stabbed this poor bloke in the kidneys with it. Wrap up. Sergeant? Sir? Any ponds, rivers, canals about here? There's a well shop just beyond the dog and drake. We'll get a boat and dragging irons quick. Yes, sir. Half a mo. What about my statue and my bank notes? What are you going to do about that? I'm going fishing. Uh, Where's Sergeant Bingham now? I think that's them just coming in, sir. Well, about time, too. They've been gone about a couple of hours. Got anything, Sergeant? <laughs> Only half the Welsh half in the boat. All right, come along in. Right, I don't know why these things always have to happen on a cold night. Well, we'd better turn it up till daylight. Right, and we'll get more light on the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Keep the boat steady, see, look. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on, this is no time for bathing. Oh, here we are. Wait a minute. Oh, I've just my foot. All oh, right, well, leave your foot behind. Go on. I can't move it, sir. Just a minute. Oh. Come on, come on. I've got it. Bless my soul, so you have. Yeah, I thought I'd find it here. Well, don't stand there. Bring it along. Come on. Right. Give my hand, Sergeant. Right. I'll put it up here. Yes, sir. I had a feeling it was a bag when I fell over it. Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> Here's Hercules. Hello. Here's a knife. Yeah, that could have done it. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a leather worker's knife. No, I thought that. Oh, maybe what's more. Whoever he is, he bought the blades in Sheffield and fitted them to his own handles. That's right. Why would he do that? Oh, I don't know. Like to work with something odd, I suppose. Like me choosing you for an assistant. <laughs> anyway, it'll be easy to trace. Like a three-cornered cape or a tuppenny blue Mauritius. Now, I wonder what this is. Hmm. Huh. Oh, it's an attaché case, Inspector. Of course. Drag me up a mulberry tree. Do you know what this is? <laughs> it's an attaché case. It's the budget bag. Look at that. What? The Chancellor of the Exchequer's budget bag. You mean... You mean the Chancellor of the Exchequer murdered that man? Oh, gosh, what a case. Don't be silly. It was stolen. Of course, there won't be a muzzle about this. Why would anyone want to steal an empty budget bag? Well, it wasn't empty when it was stolen. It had the budget secrets in it. We're all the same. The... Yes, and the budget speech is this week. Here, we've got to get a move on. I'll bring this along, will you? There's an Inspector Hornley to see you, sir. Did you say Inspector? Yes, sir, from Scotland Yard. Well, what on earth? Show him in. Yes, sir. Inspector Hornley, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I trust you'll pardon the intrusion, sir. A little matter of lost property. That's very kind of you, but I'm not aware... Your budget bag, sir. Budget bag? Yes, sir. But really, Inspector, I should have thought a man from Scotland Yard would have known an official bag when he saw one. There are bags within bags, sir. Now, sir, what about that? Well, that's my budget bag. That's what I was saying, sir. Where'd you find it? In the Welsh Harp. The Welsh Harp? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Just a moment.
There's my bag. God, Blind O'Reilly. You really are, Inspector Honley. Well, I'll begin it. You wanted myself, sir. Would you mind opening it? Certainly. Anything missing, sir? Nothing whatever. I see. It certainly is a remarkable imitation. Dench, have you any explanation of this? I, sir? No, sir. Just doesn't make sense to me. Why anyone should want to make a replica of my bag, I simply cannot understand. But they wouldn't have deceived me. I know that bag anywhere. Is that your bag, sir? Of course it is. You're quite sure, sir? My dear inspector, I may be only a politician, but I can identify my own property. How, sir? Well, but that stain, for one thing. It's tea. I spilt some on it this afternoon. Yes, sir. But that's the dud. I mean, the duplicate. What, this? Yes, sir. Look. That's astounding. Now, sir. Where did you spill this tea? The place called the Pheasant Inn. I usually drop in there on my way down here for a cup of tea each day. I think I've got it. Someone had switched the bags. When you were having your tea at the inn, it was the duplicate you had with you. That accounts for the stain. This was the real one. Where was that? Well, you see, sir, the thief was having a look at the documents. And when he learned all he wanted to know, he returned your property. In other words, someone is in possession of the budget secrets. I'm afraid so, sir. I don't like that, Inspector. Well, I'm not exactly ecstatic myself. Do you realize how serious it is? I make my speech the day after tomorrow and I can't change the budget. You must find this man. Very good, sir. I'll go down to the present inn right away. It might be a good idea if I go along with the inspector, sir. I'll be able to show him exactly where you were sitting. Excellent. Mr. Dench is my private secretary. He might be able to help you. No doubt, sir. Fine. I'll get my hat. Oh, well, by the way, sir, was there any particular item in this budget which might make someone anxious to get an early tip? My good man, one glance at those papers would enable anybody with the knowledge of finance to make an enormous fortune. Uh -huh. At the same time, he might do irreparable damage to this country's credit and banking systems. Well, in that case, I'd better get hold of him before he lays hands on my post office balance. Oh, um, have you any idea, sir, who could have substituted the article? Not in the least. But it seems incredible to me that anybody should be allowed to rob the Chancellor of the Exchequer with impunity. Quite so, sir. Generally the other way around. Peasant in? Let me speak to Miss Gordon, please. Oh, hold on a minute. Is that for me? No, Mr. Gordon, it's for Miss Anne. Boyfriend, I suppose. Hello? Hello, Peter. I haven't time to explain now, but the police are coming down to your place and I'll be with them. All right. Yes, I'll come in and play cards another evening. Right. Goodbye. I'll be with you in a moment, Inspector. Well, hurry up, then. Hello. I wonder what game he plays, sir. Rummy? Oh, Peter seems to be a man of few words. I can't understand what he meant. That's because he's a politician. Bill. Mm hmm? Have you had any trouble with anyone lately? Is this just sisterly affection or curiosity? But have you? Only with a bank manager. He wouldn't look on an overdraft as an ordinary debt. Bill, I'm serious. The police are on their way down. How do you know? Peter's just told me. Did he say why? No. What can they want at this time of night? Oh, they probably want a drink. Are you sure it's nothing you've been doing? Why should it be me? Do I look like a criminal? Oh, don't be silly. Only you have an unfortunate habit of getting yourself into jam. Go on, rake up everything I've ever done. You make me tired. Am I intruding? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it that. I don't understand. Don't you? Well, think it over. You'll probably get my meaning. Is something the matter, Miss Gordon? No, nothing. Did you want to speak to me? Well, I thought perhaps that I might be of some assistance. It's very kind of you, but really it isn't anything. But if the police are coming down? Then you did hear what we were saying. I happened to pick up the extension phone. I couldn't help hearing what Mr. Dench said. Would I be locking up, miss? Not yet, Alfred. We're expecting the police. The police? And what are they after? I don't know. Have you anything on your conscience? Near a thing, miss. When will they be here? In a few minutes. All right, miss. I'll keep an eye out for them. Good evening, sir. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Dench. Good evening, Alfred. Quite a nice wee pub, miss. Oh, wee pubs are nice, given the time and place. Speaking of time, have you got an extension here? No, sir. Why? Well, it's after hours, you know. Oh, there isn't a customer in the place for all that. We kept open for you. What, you expected us? Not me. Miss Anne did. Who's she? Miss Gordon, sir. She owns the hotel. And she wouldn't want anyone better. Did she say what we were coming about? She did not. And I told her there was no knowing what the police does be after. Well, sometimes even the police themselves don't know what they does be... I mean, do be... 
or after. Will I tell you here, please? Ever heard of telepathy, Sergeant? Telepathy? No, it's, uh, it's what we in Scotland call the second sight. Uh, lots of us possess the gift. Nearly all the savage races have it. And that's true. What do you mean? I make a remark to the Chancellor of the Exchequer and it's heard miles away out here at the Pheasant Inn. Now, how could that happen? Look here, Inspector. You don't have to waste any more time. I telephone Miss Gordon. Well, I don't want to seem inquisitive, but I'd like to know why. Well, she happens to be a friend of mine and I wanted to protect her. Superfluous, Mr. Dench. I'm no terror to the female sex. Mm, that's right. Good evening. Good evening, Miss. And this is Inspector Hornley, Miss Gordon. I must apologize for this late call, Miss. But I've come to investigate the stealing of the budget bag from the Chancellor of the Exchequer this afternoon. Peter, is this true? Yes, and the inspector believes that it took place here in the hotel. But how could it happen? Well, that's what I'm here to find out, Miss. Are you the owner? Yes, my brother's a sort of partner with me. What sort of partner? Well, he has other interests that keep him busy. He's away from home quite a lot. Then you run the hotel yourself? Well, Miss Gordon has an experienced manager, a Mr. Whittens. Thank you. Were you here this afternoon? Yes. Did you happen to notice some tea spilt on the Chancellor's bag? Everybody did. He was quite upset about it. I suppose you don't remember where he was sitting, do you? Yes, I do. I'll show you. Thank you. This was the table, wasn't it, Peter? Mm-hmm. Mr. Whittens came in with the Chancellor and then went away. Would you mind taking the same chair the Chancellor used? He sat here and I sat opposite. I say. Sergeant, give Mr. Dent the budget bag. Right, sir. You might place it in the same spot as it was this afternoon. That's about right, as far as I remember. Were there many people in the room at the time? Oh, about a dozen, I suppose. Nobody sat anywhere near us, except... Except who? The Bill. Mr. Gordon. He sat there. I'll remember that. But surely the Chancellor wasn't wearing his coat at the table. No, he took it off before. What about his hat? Where did he take his coat off? Why, out in the hall. I'd like to see the exact spot. And the Chancellor always carried the bag himself, eh? That's right. Yeah, did you happen to notice which hand you was got? It was over there where Alfred is standing now that the Chancellor took off his coat. Oh, yeah. Or well, would you mind showing me exactly what he did? All right. Now then, we came in together. I stepped over to that side of the table to speak to Whittens. The Chancellor moved over here and gave his bag to the porter. Then he took off his coat. The porter gave him back the bag, and we went into the dining room. Is that right, porter? Quite right, sir. Only it wasn't me. It was me assistant and understudy, so to speak. Henry, his name is. Henry, that's the man. Uh, um, your uh, colleague, so to speak. That's right, sir. He always makes a dart at the important people. Featured at the tip, eh? Where does he make his dart from? Where else but there? What about that door? Where does that lead to? It doesn't lead anywhere. It's just a cupboard where Henry does be keeping his brooms and brushes. Do you happen to know where Henry is now? I do not. All I know is I'm doing his work. Then he doesn't live on the premises? Oh, yes, he does. But every night since Sunday, he's gone up to his sister's place in London, with Mr. Whitten's permission. Where is his sister's place? Sure, I don't know, but it's somewhere in London. Miss Gordon, do you mind if I take a look at this man Henry's room? Not at all. Alfred will show you the way. Thank you, miss. This way, Inspector. Oh, um, take the budget back to the car. We'll leave with the driver. Right, sir. I'm not the under-porter, and I take it the same applies to you. Oh, Mr. Whittens, this is one of the inspectors from Scotland Yard, the manager of the place. May I ask what you want up here? Sure, hasn't the Chancellor of the Exchequer lost his little bag full of taxes? And he sent this gentleman to find it for him. The under-porter's bedroom is rather a curious place to look. About as curious as finding the manager in it. Why, well, you the village as well? I'm just going to lock up the petrol pump, Inspector. 
There's been a lot of petrol stealing from cars and pumps around here, and we like to assist the police in the prevention of crime. A very laudable attitude, Mr. Whittens. But perhaps you wouldn't mind answering me a few questions. Objection to helping the forces of the law. How long has Henry been here? About six months. Did you engage him? I'm the manager of this hotel, so naturally I engage the servants. Reference is all right? They satisfied me. No doubt. I think that'll be all, Mr. Whittens. Don't let me keep him from your petrol pump. Oh, yes. Of course. Smart businessman, your manager. Keeps an eye on everything, I should think. If you mean he's one of them fellas that does be snooping all over the place, hoping to catch you on the hop, then you're right. Will this get you into trouble? I don't think so. They can't possibly think I'm involved. I didn't mean that. I was thinking of your job. You tell honey, don't worry about that. The main thing is to keep you out of it. Do you know anything about what Henry does in his spare time? Divil a thing. He's never the one to talk a lot. Ah. Uh -huh. That seems to settle it. Do you mean Henry done it? What'll I say to him when he comes back? When do you expect him back? He knows if he isn't back in time for the boots and knives at the crack of dawn tomorrow, there'll be the curse of Cromwell waiting for him. You're not Welsh by any chance, are you? Me? From Wales? With me name of Callaghan? What kind of a detective do you call yourself? I'll be able to tell you that tomorrow night. Allow me to introduce myself. Holt's the name, travelling representative of Messrs. Thurby and Smith, textile manufacturers. And what were you representing out there? I just stepped into the garden to see the curtains. Oh. Do you have to be in the dark to do that? It helps. You see, you can tell what sort the material is by looking at the light through it. Mm, well, it looks pretty thin to me. Thick or thin, there's nothing I don't know about textiles. I can close you from the cradle to the grave, sir. Oh, could you? Huh. Well, you're a bit late for the first and a bit premature for the second. Oh, here, Inspector. Come here and look what I found. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Who is this, Sergeant? Well, he says he's a travelling representative of the textile industry. Aye. And in my opinion, he's pretty strong in fabrications. Your sparring partner doubts my bona fide, sir. Aye, and who wouldn't? I found him cowering behind the curtains. I feel perfectly certain Inspector Hornley will be satisfied with my explanation. How do you know my name? Well, I must have seen you before, sir. And I always remember faces, even ordinary ones. Evidently, you don't remember me. I always go on the motto that some things are best forgotten, even if they can't be forgiven. Are you staying in this hotel? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm hoping to have a few words with Mr. Gordon. Ah. Where is Mr. Gordon? In the bar, Inspector. I'll take you along. Thank you, it isn't necessary. I never had any difficulty in finding my way to a bar yet. That's right. Here, you try and get some interesting facts on the textile trade. They'll look well in your notebook. I will, sir. I'm just dying to interrogate him. Hello. Am I right in supposing all the gentlemen from Scotland Yard? Quite right, sir. You're Mr. Gordon, I presume. That's right. Well, if I didn't know you'd come by the budget bag, I'd take you for one of the vice squad. Well, I hope it isn't familiar to the cause you to make that error. But how did you know I came about the budget bag? Mr. Dench has told me in accents of statesmanlike gloom, my sister in tremulous tones, and Mr. Whitten's been flapping about like an old hen. And in fact, you're the only one that doesn't care. Exactly, Inspector. I've made so little money in the past year, the budget doesn't mean a thing to me. Well, I congratulate you. Now, sir, 
If you could spare a minute from this game of chance. Skill, Inspector. Now come home. Yeah, but the point is, were you at home all the evening? No, Inspector, I wasn't. I took my sister up to town. She went to see some friends, and, and what do you think I did? I wouldn't like to say. I went to a show. A variety show. There's the counterpart of my ticket. That's the perfect alibi, isn't it? Yeah, it would be if this ticket came out of a time clock, which it doesn't. Have you asked our very efficient manager, Mr. Whittens, how he spent his evening? All in good time. Because when you do, ask him who he took up to London with him. Right. We'll go and ask him. Nothing will give me greater pleasure. Excuse me, Inspector, but it's getting very late. Can you tell us how long this investigation is likely to last? Well, the Chancellor's speech is the day after tomorrow. But if you'll answer me one question, we'll call it a day. Go on. Did you drive someone to town tonight? As a matter of fact, I did. Who? Henry. I picked him up outside the hotel and gave him a lift. I dropped him in Oxford Circus and that's all. And I suppose you've got half a dozen witnesses who saw him get out and walk away. At least 50 people must have seen him. But they don't know it and I don't know them. Was he carrying a suitcase? Yes, an old brown one. That seems to settle it. Well now, I kept you all up pretty late. And it's only fair to tell you why. Sergeant Bingham, I want you to help me to demonstrate. All right, sir. Nothing like a good reconstruction. Now, get over there, will you? Now, you can be the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Now, according to Mr. Dench, the Chancellor came into the hotel this afternoon with the budget bag in his left hand. No, 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 left. He handed the bag to the porter. And as he turned to take off his coat, the porter placed the bag down here behind this umbrella stand. After taking the coat, the porter produced a duplicate bag from here, which he had already planted, and handed it to the Chancellor, who went into the dining room. Go on, go on, go on. Henry then slipped into the cupboard with the real bag, where he made notes on the budget. And when the Chancellor returned from the dining room, he gave him back the real bag, having reversed the whole process. Face, and it's like one of them mediums at a CNC to see you do it. Keep quiet, Alfred. You know, Mr. Whittens, if you'd had X-ray eyes instead of ordinary ones, You'd have seen the duplicate bag inside that old suitcase of Henry's when you drove him to town. Congratulations, Inspector. So the mystery is unraveled. I'm sorry to say it isn't, sir. You see, Henry wasn't the type of man who could plan a crime like this. He must have been acting for someone else. Someone who needed money pretty badly. Or someone who saw an opportunity of making big money. Or again, someone who needed money to get on in the world. But whoever he was, he was a man of education. Who could organize and plan every detail. I don't want to teach you your job, Inspector. Oh, I'm always ready to learn. It seems to me you should find Henry and get the truth from him. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? Because Henry was murdered. At a few minutes after 8 o'clock this evening. Now, this isn't what you might call a pleasant sight. But it's the knife that killed Henry. Has anyone ever seen it? Or one like it before? No? Ah, oh, well, I didn't expect any other answer. Mr. Dench. Would you mind driving me back by the Chancellor's house? Certainly. Sergeant, get back to the yard in the car. Put this in the bag and hand the whole lot over to fingerprints. Right, sir. And look sharp about it. Yes, Tell him I want to report first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Good night, Miss Gordon. Good night, all. I expect we shall meet again very soon. Good night. It's a funny thing. The first time I'm giving a car to myself, and it breaks down. Well, I can't think what's wrong with it. There'll be any petrol. Oh, I filled up before we left the yard. Never mind. Look and see. I know I took on ten gallons. Finally, it's empty. It's what? Uh, Sergeant, listen, this is a miracle. I could swear oh, I... Oh, wrap up. Well, so if it's a taxi, Sergeant. No, no, they might not allow it in my expense sheet. Now I'll walk to our bus. Uh, well, what about this here statue? Will I take it with you? What? Me lug that thing all over London? What do you think I am? Monument to Mason? Uh, will I come with you, Sergeant? What for? Well, it's this, uh, this alley. It's a bit... Uh, it's a bit morbid. What's the matter? Afraid of being left alone? Not me, it's you I'm thinking of. Hold by yourself. That there bag. <laughs> you listen. Many's a winter's night I've tramped alone the moors of Bonnie Scotland. And it's not likely I'd be frightened in a duck to be London side street. You stay here and take care of that statue till I send you some petrol. Yes, Sergeant.
lost the little guy. <laughs> a fine time for you to arrive. But what's it all about? Don't bother me. Huh? Oh, I see. You want your little button. Don't touch it. <laughs> now see what you've done. You've ruined the fingerprints and my clue. Oh, it's a clue, is it? Well, who do you think you are, Charlie Chan? I'm Sergeant Bingham of the CID. An attempt has been made in my life, and as usual, the man in uniform turns up too late. Is that so? You'll hear more about this in the morning. <laughs> and so will I. See what you're thinking? There aren't any words for it. Not in any language. I'm very sorry, Inspector. You pestiferous, elongated, flat-footed, bald-headed bunch of haggis. Why didn't you stay on your own native heat, tossing the spawn and whacking your tom-toms, instead of unloading yourself on the long-suffering English? Bite that off at the root and you couldn't hurt me more. No, thanks. I'm a vegetarian. Well, what happened? Well, I was... I was wandering down the alley, as blithe as a wee lark. When all of a sudden, it seemed that Ben Nevis up and hit me. And then all I remember is three ladies in white singing old Lang Syne. Any idea who attacked you? No. But I've got a fine clue. What? Fingerprints under that awning? No. A button. I found it beside me when I woke up. Now all I've got to do is to find the owner. And he can sew it back on his coat, I know. But what were you doing in that alley? Well, it's a long story. But if you'll only be patient, I can reconstruct the whole occurrence. Oh, rapper. Oh, but how was that to know they'd follow me? How? Now listen, when I was a sergeant, Sir George Selwyn, who was then Chief Commissioner, said to me, my boy, you're going to go far. Now, why do you think he said that? I don't know. He's one of the lunacy commissioners now, isn't he? What do you mean? Nothing. I was only thinking aloud. You think? Don't make me laugh. If you were a stamp, you'd be a perforated forger with a fake postmark and no gum. I swap you for a cigarette card. Well, I never thought you'd be so hard. Me hard? You wait till you hear from upstairs. Is the chief superintendent likely to be very angry? No, no, no. You just give your great big hug and a kiss. Bless my soul. You throw away the duplicate bag, our one and only piece of evidence. I've still got the statue. Surely they must have found some fingerprints on it. Yes, a complete selection of yours. On the merry thought. Oh, well, what's the use of fighting against fate? Here am I, trying to do my duty. And all I get is my head cracked and my good name smashed. Well, the chief can't hurt me more. Well, that'll depend on me. You've jeopardized your whole career, my boy. And if the chief super didn't beat out of my hand... What's that about the chief superintendent? With all due deference, sir, I was just describing your methods to Sergeant Bingham. Mm -hmm. And I was well, telling... Well, to report. Yes, sir. I'm afraid we've lost that duplicate bag. You what? Lost it? Yes, sir. Oh, good heavens, man, how, how? Well, sir, in a manner of speaking, it was my fault. Oh, come to the point, man. Was it or was it not your fault? You see, sir, I was too trusting. Well? I allowed Sergeant Bingham to bring up that bag by himself, and he was savagely attacked. You've been long enough in the force, Hornley, to know that if you want a thing done, you must do it yourself, and not leave it to a simple Scot. Oh, there it is. Badly hurt, Sergeant? Oh, I can carry on, sir. Go on, sir. It may have been partly my fault. I wouldn't like you to blame the inspector altogether. No, it's very nice of you, Sergeant. Still, I'm afraid I must take the blame. It was my responsibility. Well, never mind whose fault it is. The point is, the Chancellor makes his speech tomorrow. And before he gets up in the house, we've got to find the murderer. Tomorrow? Yes. Can you do it? Well, if I could guarantee that, sir, I'd be Chief Superintendent myself. Still, I can try. And Mr. Whitton's to see Inspector Hornley, sir. All right, I'm just going. Bring him in. And don't let Bingham do too much, till he's all right in the head. Don't you worry, sir. I'll look after him. Oh, well, you, you certainly did me a good turn there. S.P. the corpse, my boy. What do you say? French for the old school tie. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning. What can I do for you? I may be able to be of assistance. Well, I could do with some. Sit down, will you? Thank you. What I'm about to say, might give you a wrong impression. Ah, I see. You know something about someone. That's right. But I wouldn't like you to think... I never do. Go on. 
Well, about three weeks ago, I was asked if I knew the name of any leather worker who was good at his job, but in a small way of business. Who asked you? I hardly like to tell you. I see. You come all the way from the inn to tell me you hardly like to tell me. Well, I'm afraid you might think I had a personal bias against this man. You not worry about that. I won't consider the point. Well, it was Mr. Dench. Was it indeed? Did he give any reason? He said he wanted the budget bag repaired. Where did you send him? A man called Parkinson, 104 Shepherd's Market. Nothing wrong with your memory, is there? I thought you might be doubtful about my story. So I brought along Alfred. He heard Dench ask me. That's very thoughtful of you. You corroborate this statement. Yes, sir. Mr. Whitten told me I had to come along. But I hope I'm not getting Mr. Dench into a hole. No, no, no. Nice gentleman, Mr. Dench, isn't he? Very, sir. Has a certain affection for Miss Anne, I believe. Yes, sir. Well, I can't say I blame him. Well, gentlemen, if you've nothing further to say, I won't detain you any longer. I can tell you where Mr. Dench lives. Don't bother. I already know. Bingham, show these two gentlemen out. I hope I've done the right thing. You've done all I would have expected of you, Mr. Whittens. Good day. Good morning, sir. And what can I do for you? Well, if that's the best act you can put on when somebody comes in, we'd all be booked to appear at the Old Bailey. Why did you do it? Why did you have to do that? What are you talking about? Henry. It's in the papers. You don't think I had anything to do with that, do you? But it's awful. He's dead. I know. Well, I'm just as upset as you are. After all, he was one of us. That's what frightens me. Suppose the police find out. The police won't find out anything unless you start talking. You swore that nothing could go wrong. Well, nothing has gone wrong. As far as we're concerned. Yes, but suppose they get on to us. Don't you think we ought to tell the police? What? Tell them our story first, before they find out. Now listen. If you go to the police, you'll only go once. Do you understand? Yes. Good. Well, I mustn't see him hanging around here. If the police come, just behave like a fool who knows nothing. It ought to be easy. Why don't you go away for a holiday? Holiday? Might be good for your health. One, two, one, two. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Dench. Oh, good morning, Inspector. You're about early? Oh, we don't call this early over the yard, sir. Tell me, is there any news? No, not yet. Well, there are one or two things I'd like to ask you, if you don't mind. Certainly. Won't you sit down? Thank you, sir. I'm sorry to trouble you, but it's rather important to get all the facts. And there's something I want to check up on, about this budget bag. Oh, yes? I understand you had it repaired lately. As a matter of fact, I did. Why? Well, you didn't think of mentioning it last night, did you? Oh, that was a month ago. Never occurred to me it'd have any connection with last night's affair. It's a clue, Mr. Dench. And clues are what we are looking for. Yes, of course. Tell me, how did you find out? By listening. Some of your friends are so fond of you, they can't stop talking about you. Well, they certainly haven't wasted any time about it. Cigarette? No, thank you. You don't mind if I do? By all means. Tom. Nice girl, that Miss Gordon. Hmm? Oh, yes, very. I understand you and she hope to get married one day. Well, I really don't see what my marriage has to do with the budget. Oh, don't you? The budget's got quite a lot to do with matrimony. For instance, they make an allowance for a wife, don't they? And then there's the, um, the little ones. Well, that's very kind of you to take so much interest in my future. Oh, under my somewhat ragged exterior, there's... <coughs> there's quite a lot of romance. Getting married soon, when I'm in a position to. And very sensible too, if I may say so. Gives you a motive to get on, doesn't it? I suppose you know quite a lot of people who are well up in the financial world. Yes, of course. I... Now listen, Inspector. It must be obvious to a man of your intelligence that I wouldn't go to the inn to steal the budget secrets. Why, they're at my elbow every day in the Chancellor's house. You know, it's a funny thing. 
But whenever I arrest a man for a crime, he always starts by telling me of a dozen ways he could have done it, and never by any chance of the way it was done. Are you going to arrest me? Silly. Of course not. I wouldn't dream of such a thing. All the same, I'd like you to come along with me. Where to? To this Mr. Parkinson. He'll be glad to see an old customer. Oh, very well. Shop! <whistles> Customers? Seems to be a strike in the leather business. Or a lockout. Maybe he's not in. Oi! Anyone at home? Nobody here? Funny smell. Wonder what it is. Cheese. Oh, no, it's not. I know. It's leather. Go on. Hmm. Well, did he find anything? Only that Mr. Parkinson isn't in his bar. Is that the bathroom? Yes, in a manner of speaking. Yeah, you better go and... Hello? That's funny. What? Look at that. Well, what about it? Well, at least we know that he left suddenly. Uh, just what I was thinking. How do you know? Well, he left this off the hook. Hello? Hello? Go away. Hello, is exchange? Yes, I know. How long has the receiver been off? Inspector, quick! God, Lava Rosa. What have you done now? I opened this door and he fell into the room. God. Why did you come in here? I was looking for Parkinson. You found him, all right. You don't suppose I'd be mad enough to kill a man with a couple of detectives at my elbow, do you? Don't ask me. I'm only a policeman. That's right. Ever seen anything like this before? The other man was killed with a knife like that. How do you know it isn't the very same knife that killed Henry? <laughs> well, I hardly think the inspector would have given it back to the murderer. Besides, every knife on that bench is exactly the same. You seem to know all the answers. Ever been in here before? No, nope. only in the shop. Mm. Take care, William. Gosh, what a way to treat money. Well, I've heard of a chap's income being cut, but never quite like this. Anyway, they're tenors, so they should be easily traced. Bingham, find out where they came from. Right, sir. I've traced the notes, Inspector. They were issued to Michael Cavanaugh's 200 postal plate. You're coming on, my boy. We'll make a copper of you yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very nice of you to say so. It'll be interesting to make the acquaintance of this Mr. Michael Cavanaugh. I'd like to know why his hobby is carving up banknotes. You have had quite a lot of money from me already, you know. Well, I'm not asking for a lot more. No? I don't want enough to clear out of this confounded country. Oh, look here, Gordon. I'm a financier, a speculator, if you like, but not an exporter, particularly of unwanted goods. This is as much in your interest as mine. Well, how can that be? Well, if I get into a jam, you'll be right alongside me, cooking. I was wondering when you would say that. No, oh, I'm not threatening you. You are not, because I hold all the cards. Yes, you forget one thing. We're in this deal together. You are wrong. You had an idea, you brought it to me. It was a foolish idea that did not work. But it was your idea, Mr. Gordon, not mine. You'll have quite a time making the police believe that. The police? I'm not afraid of your English police. I like them too much. Come in. Inspector Hornley of Scotland Yard to see you, sir. What is this? What did you tell him? I never even mentioned your name. He must be here for something else. Let him come in. Yes, sir. Get in that room, quick. Inspector Hawley and Sergeant Bingham, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Cavanaugh. Good afternoon, Inspector. This is an unexpected pleasure. I have never met anyone from Scotland Yard yet. Well, if I had known that, I'd have brought along the Chief Commissioner. <laughs> As it is, I'm afraid you'll have to put up with Sergeant Bingham. Uh, how do you do, Sergeant? I often see how much I like the English police. Uh, British. He's a foreigner, sir, like you. Well, now, after all these little pleasantries, what about getting down to business? Oh, well, gentlemen, would you like to have a drink? Indubitably. Uh, just a but not just now. Oh, well, won't you sit down? No, thank you, sir. I will give you a minute. Now, sir, you're a financier, I believe. 
Well, in my own small way, yes. You invest money in all sorts of stocks and shares, don't you? Yes, all sorts of stocks and shares. And commodities? Wheat, oil, rubber, copper? Yes, yes. And leather? I beg your pardon? I don't quite understand. Well, it's quite a simple question, isn't it? Have you had any dealings with a Mr. Alexander Parkinson of 104 Shepherd's Market? Alexander Parkinson? I don't think so. Why? Because he was murdered a couple of hours ago. I fail to see how that can concern me. And I take it you didn't know him? I never heard of him in my life. But it may surprise you to know that 200 pounds in banknotes was found on him. Why should it surprise me? Because those notes were issued to you a month ago by the Southern County Bank. Oh, that might well be. I have many dealings, you know. In the course of a month, I could have paid them to one of 20 people. Well, don't you keep a record of the numbers? Never. I am perhaps what you call a bit careless about money. Prodigal, I call it. However, here are the notes. Now, perhaps you'll observe that they've been torn in half. How odd. I cannot think of a reason for doing such a stupid thing. Can't you? I can. It would interest me to know. I prefer to tell my bedtime stories to a judge and jury. I'm afraid I won't be there to hear you. That's a pity. Still, if you change your mind, I'll be happy to reserve your seat. It's very kind of you, Inspector. I'm sorry I could not give you more information. Don't you worry, Mr. Kavanos. You've given me quite a lot, thank you very much. Good day. Good day, Inspector. You've heard what he said? Yes, every word. How you found out all that in the time defeats me. Did you know that Parkinson has been murdered? No more than you. What do you mean? Just this. That if I'm innocent, then so are you. But if they pin it on me, there'll be two of us in the dock. It's just possible that for once you are right. What do you want? What I asked for before. Give me some money and I'll clear out. You don't expect me to get very far, do you? I have no more treasury notes, and I shall not give you bank notes that Inspector Hornley can trace. When do you start? Tomorrow morning. I've got to settle things up with Anne. Gordon, does she know anything? No, and she's not going to either. Any luck, Inspector? Do I look as if I've been lucky? Blind old Riley, what a day. Did you get anything at the stock exchange? Only a lot of stories I can't repeat. But I found out one thing. What's that? There's been no unusual speculation there. That means the thief is afraid to use his knowledge. Well, that's one feather in the cups. Well, you can stick your feather where you like. What I want is the murderer. Hello? Yes, Inspector only is here. What you say? The pheasants are in. Hey, wait a minute. Here's the inspector. Hello. Hello. They've cut off. What do they say? He asks if you are here. I tell him yes. He say you come down. The pheasant is in. And you are going to be very interested. So. Hmm. Bingham. This may be what we're looking for. Come on. Hello, you kind of bid me a fond farewell. I didn't know you were going away. It's a sudden decision, isn't it? No, I've been thinking about it for some time. I get bored if I stop in one place too long. Now, let me see. I've left something out. I can't think what it is. This? Hello, where'd you... 
No, that isn't mine. It's got your initials on the other side. Oh, so it has. Funny, for a moment I thought it wasn't mine. Where did you get it? I found it. Oh, where? In Parkinson's shop. What? It was on the bench where he keeps his knives. Well, that's not bad, even for a politician. This isn't a joke, Bill. And I'm not laughing. Were you in Parkinson's shop today? No, I wasn't. What should I be doing in Parkinson's shop? Do you know he's been murdered? Yes. And tell me after you telephoned her. How did your lighter get there? Well, I don't know. I've been looking for it. Matter of fact, I've been using matches. If I were you, Bill, I'd go to the police right away. Oh, well, why? Holden knew first thing this morning that I'd had the budget bag repaired at Parkinson's. How long do you think it's going to take him to find out that you were there? I should tell him first. And I tell you, I've never been near the place. Bill, you've told too many lies to Anne for me to believe you. That lighter proves something, doesn't it? Yes, you're right. If what you say could possibly be true, it proves that you're an accessory after the fact of murder. On your own showing, you've withheld important evidence from the police. Only because I don't believe you murdered Parkinson. Oh, thanks. And just how did you arrive at that charitable decision? Because you haven't the nerve. You can cheat and lie and brag about your wonderful get-rich-quick schemes, but killing a man is another thing. You wouldn't risk your neck. Well, if you're so certain I didn't do it, why didn't you go ahead and hand the lighter over to Hornley? I wish I knew just why you didn't. And you're too deep for me. All right, give it to me and I'll take it to him. Oh, no, if there's any dealing with Hornley, I'll do it myself. Now, one thing's quite certain, I'm not going away. I'm safe here when I can see what's going on. Bill! What are you two arguing about? We weren't arguing. As a matter of fact, I was just thanking Peter. You found my lighter last night and brought it along. Didn't you, Peter? Yes. I brought it along. Bill, what's happened? What's happened? Well, Henry's been murdered and so is Parkinson and the budget bag's been stolen. Isn't that enough? That's not a reason for you and Peter to quarrel. Or is it? Well, ask your boyfriend. Neither of you believe a word I say. Ask him what's happened. Perhaps you'll believe his version. And to get out of here, I've got enough to put up with as it is. Go on, get out. Good evening, sir. Where is Mr. Gordon? He's up in his room, sir. Will I tell him you want him? No, just show me to his room. But who shall I... Very good, sir. This is his room, sir. What name will I say? Never mind. What are you doing here? You do not want to see me? Well, you've always said it was dangerous for you to come down here. Why choose now of all times? I've heard you change your mind and decided to stay at home. Who told you that? A friend. I didn't know you had one. You must leave at once. And I suppose your friend thinks that too. But he thinks he's nothing. It is what I say. Well, for the present, I stay right where I am. Gordon, I'm thinking for your good. It is better that you go. Whenever you start thinking of anybody but yourself, I begin to wonder why. The reason is very simple. The police will come again and... I do not like Inspector Hornley. That's funny. I've taken quite a fancy to him. In fact, I'm thinking of having a little chat with him. What's that? I never know whether you English are serious, joking or mad. Well, I'm serious this time. It's got me down. Yesterday it seemed quite easy. Today, it's beyond me. You think it'll be easy if you tell the police? No, it won't be easy, but it's the best way out. I've been thinking things over. Very well. But don't be too hasty. Let me think also. No, I'm not stopping you. I think much better if I have a glass in my hand. There's a bell over there if you want me. Thanks. Tell me, what is it you have been thinking? I've been doing some sums in my head. Subtraction and addition. I don't understand. Well, there were four of us in this deal when we started. Henry and Parkinson and you and I. If you count me as one. Well, Parkinson's dead and Henry's dead. That leaves just the two of us. Well, I'd just as soon be the last. Are you suggesting that I... I have anything to do with these murders? I'm only suggesting that somebody's playing rather a nasty game. Do you remember this? Of course I do. I gave it to you. Mm, after that share deal. Well, strange as it may seem, Dench found it and returned it to me this evening. Well, why shouldn't he? He said he found it in a room in which Parkinson had been murdered. But you told me you hadn't been there. Well, whether I'd been there or not, I didn't leave my lighter there. How could Dench find it? 
If what he says is true, somebody planted it, sir. Somebody who'd like to see me hanged. And this someone is Dench. Well, it might be and it might not. Of course it is. The story about finding it must be a lie. I wonder. Come in. You rang, sir? Just bring me a white lady, please. And you? Same as usual, please, Alvin. Yes, sir. Well, that's odd. What are you? Now I know why I thought it wasn't mine when Dench first gave it to me. Let me see. No, it's no concern of yours, old boy. Well, perhaps it is. Anyway, all I've got to do is to put one question in a certain quarter to find out who's been trying to frame me, and that's the man the police are after. What do you mean to do? See Hornley. He'll be glad to know I can put him on to the man that murdered Parkinson. Who cares about Parkinson? I'm tired of his name. I see you better let the police do their own dirty work. And I tell you, I'm going to see Hornley as soon as I can. Excuse me, Mr. Witness, sir, but there's a brandy and ginger and a white lady to go up to Mr. Gordon's room. Is Mr. Gordon a visitor? Yes, sir. A gentleman I never saw before. He's up in his room. Excuse me. Have you locked up the petrol pumps? Wasn't it on the tip of his tongue to say I hadn't? Well, go and do it at once. I will, sir. Oh, left one while you're at it. It's against the law to serve you at the barn, but I'll send one to your room. Okay, I'll have a bitter. Very good, Mr. Holt. In a mug. The law doesn't say we can't talk in here, does it? No. Anything wrong? Plenty. A budget bag, for instance. Now, be a sport. Who are the coppers after? I'm not in their confidence, Mr. Holt. Well, my money's on Dench. He's the only one that knew his nibs was coming here to tea. And what with that young madam making eyes at him, the tell was his to do as he liked him. You've no right to talk like that about Miss Gordon. Oh, so that's the idea. You're running in the same race, are you? If you can't keep a decent tie in your head, you'd better find another hotel. No offence, met Mr. Whittens. No offence. Yeah, nothing you can say will make me change my mind. Is it your final word? Absolutely. I'm even prepared to go to jail for a couple of years. But I am not. Drinks, Mr. Gordon. Oh, thanks. Put it down there, will you? No, my friend, I don't want to go to jail. And I will do a great deal to keep out. As far as I'm concerned, you can do what you like. Oh, Mr. Whittens, has my brother come down yet? He's still in his room, Miss Gordon. Thank you. Yes, I heard a scream downstairs. Well, I heard one upstairs. Hold him. And don't let anybody up or down these stairs. What's happened? I don't know. I heard a scream, and by the time I got here, she'd apparently fainted, and he was like that. Hey, get her out of here quick, before she recovers. Is he dead? I'm afraid so. Prussic acid. Gosh, who do you think did it? Cavernous? Well, I wouldn't put it past him. But why would anyone want to put prussic acid in his drink? Well, to save his own skin, I suppose. 
You look after this. Then ring up the local station. Tell them to send a doctor along, quick. Right, sir. Inspector, Miss Gordon just told me a man came into this room after she found Bill. What's that? She noticed a scarf lying on the table. Just as she picked it up, this man came in and snatched it out of her hand. That's all she remembers. Is that so? Here, you better come downstairs with me. Look here, Sergeant. You can treat these people as you like. But I'm a man of influence. I'm well known. Not as well known as you will be, Mr. Kavanos. You'll be on every front page unless you do a bit of explaining. But I know nothing. I came here tonight to talk with Gordon. I left him, I came downstairs. Of course you heard screams all over the house. No, I realized I had forgotten my scarf. So I went back and I found Gordon in the chair. His sister by him. She screamed. I was frightened and ran away. But that doesn't explain why you came here tonight. To have a friendly chat with Gordon. I happen to know that's not true. How do you know? Alfred told me he heard them quarreling. What about? Just when I went in with the drinks, they were disputing about a deal, they called it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, but I do. There were four of you in that deal. Henry, Parkinson, Gordon, yourself. And three of them have been murdered. Only you remain. I didn't do it. I will tell you the truth. The whole truth. It'll be very unpleasant for you if you don't. Gordon owed me money. He couldn't pay. He promised to get me some advance information concerning the budget. In exchange for his death. But he planned it all. But you gave him 200 pounds to have the duplicate bag made, didn't you? But I had no idea what the money was for. I couldn't trust him, so I tore the banknotes in half. He was to have my half, and he gave me the information. You're wasting your time, Inspector. Just a minute, Mr. Dench. Dench? So you are the man who was Gordon's enemy. What are you talking about? Inspector, there is the murderer. Only tonight, Gordon told me that you tried to frighten him by saying that you found his lighter at Parkinson's shop. What's that? It's a lie. When I brought his lighter here, I was trying to keep him out of the mess you made for him. But if you found the lighter in his shop, why did you hide it from me? Because I thought Bill had been up to something, but I knew he wasn't a murderer, and I wanted to protect Miss Gordon. You know, you're a public menace, Mr. Dench. You seem determined to defend one woman until every man in the case is killed. Well, I have nothing to fear. Well, all I can say is you've got more courage than sense. Is that the lighter? Yes. And Gordon said something very curious about it. What was that? He looked at it closely, and then he told me that when Dench gave it to him, he told it was not his. Did he say why? No. But he said that now he could trace the man who left it at the leather shop. Did he indeed? Did he say anything else about Mr. Dench? Yes, that they had a quarrel. But he could not say any more because at that moment the porter brought us our drinks. You were in Mr. Gordon's room twice, weren't you, while Mr. Kavanagh was there? Yes, sir. I took the gentleman's order. Mr. Witness mixed the drinks, and he gave them to me to take up after I'd locked up outside. Do you agree with that? Alfred's account is correct, Inspector. That's the way to give evidence. Now, I have one other question to ask, Mr. Witness. What did you do when you left my office this morning? I came back here. Can you verify that? Yes, sir. He was on his way when I went to catch me, boss. Oh, then you didn't come back together. No. I had some business to do. I'd forgotten that. I don't know what your business was. But when you were doing it, Parkinson was murdered. I imagine that at least two million other men were going about their business in London at the same time. That's true. But they didn't know Parkinson, and I believe you did. I knew him well. I sent Mr. Dash to him. Have you been in Gordon's room tonight? No. Then I take it that nobody but Mr. Kavanagh and Mr. Dench have been there since Gordon was killed. Mr. Whittens, you were here when Henry changed the budget bags and could have seen the switch. You afterwards drove him to town. But we've only your word for it that you dropped him at Oxford Circus and didn't follow him and kill him. So that's what you think? Also, when I was here last night, you heard me say that I'd found the bag in the Welsh Harp, didn't you? I did. Now, you could have drained the petrol from the car and attacked Sergeant Bingham in order to get the knife, which, being of a very unusual pattern, could be easily traced to Parkinson. So far, I follow you, Inspector. The next thing was to be sure of silencing Parkinson. And you were on your own in London when he was killed. This is all very interesting. Tonight? Hearing Gordon say that he could trace the man who tried to frame him with this, you could have killed him as the other men had been killed. Very clever deduction, Inspector. But all you've said could equally apply to Mr. Dench, or Alfred, or even Mr. Holt. See, my name has been brought into this, Inspector. I'd better tell you who I am. You don't need to. You're a private detective from the Circle Agency. Your usual line is divorce, and you're known as Keyhole Charlie or the Correspondent's Curse. And what's more, you're the fifth man in Mr. Kavanagh's syndicate. Oh, no. I was sent here by Mr. Kavanagh to keep an eye on Gordon to see he didn't do a bit of double-crossing. 
And if you want a tip from a fellow detective only, Dench is your man. He talks a lot about protecting his young lady, but I'll bet he was trying to protect himself. I wouldn't bet on that. If Mr. Dench was protecting himself, he wouldn't have brought the ladder back to Gordon. He'd have turned it over to me. I tell you, Inspector, it must have been this man. He was in the room when Bill Gordon died. But I didn't kill him. I believe almost anything of Mr. Kavanos. But I can't believe he attacked Bingham when he couldn't have known we had the knife. As for Mr. Holt, he didn't know I was going to Parkinson. But you did. Have you anything else to say? If I'd been going to kill Parkinson, would I have gone to the yard and told you about him? And if I'd been going to kill Gordon, would I have telephoned you to come down here? Why did you telephone? Because I knew Bill Gordon meant to run away. I thought it was you who phoned. I've been waiting for you to say so. I'm sorry to have had to use you to prove that only one man could have committed all three murders. And that man is you. What's that? Every word that I've said to witness applies to you. You weren't in the original syndicate, but you saw Henry change the bags, thought you might benefit, and so you killed him. It's a lie. Ever since you knew I'd found the knife, you've been trying to save your neck. When you left my office, you knew I was about to go to Parkinson, who could tell me he'd given you the knife. So you killed him. And tonight, when you realized that Gordon could trace you by the lighter, you killed him. You're crazy. I tell you, you're wrong. Mr. Whitton said anyone might have done it. Didn't he mix the drinks and wasn't halt in the bar with them? And the foreign gentleman up above in the room, any one of them could have put the poison in the brandy. How do you know there was poison in the brandy? The other men were killed with a knife. Nobody said how Gordon died? I thought. No, you knew because you put the poison there. So you think yourself never tricking me to say something I didn't mean? Only because I already knew that you'd killed these men. And how did you know? From this. If you look at it closely, you'll see that it has a luminous dial and plain hands. That means the glass and hands have been broken, and new ones put in in a hurry. Evidently, the jeweler had no luminous hands in stock. You'd broken this watch, and not wanting a row from Gordon, you had it repaired on the quiet. And it was in your pocket when you killed Parkinson. Then you had what you thought was a brilliant idea, to leave it there in order to throw suspicion on Gordon. It's a pack of lies. Oh, well, if it is, we can easily trace the jeweler. He'll tell us. He'll tell you nothing, for you won't be there to ask him. I took this from the British in the troubles in Dublin, and faith, I let you British have it back. And if you tried to stop me, we'd all go together. Stay where you are. Well, that's that. Not yet. Oh, what'll I do now? Well, I think you'd better try a spot of reconstruction. Well, it was a nick and nick race, but we won. There's only one thing that's a great. What's that? My wee clue. You know, I never found the owner of it. I sometimes think I'll never make a detective. Oh, yes, you will. You'll make a perfect sleuth. <laughs> Complete to the last button.